everyone and welcome to the latest issue of Bag and Board. First of all I want to apologise because it's been quite a while, a number of weeks since I've done one of these things. The main reason being um, is that generally speaking these days I don't like to do videos where I'm just showing off my regular pull for the week. Um, I prefer to um, concentrate on kind of variants, back issues, rarer comics, that kind of thing. And because I've only been picking up this kind of book um, in dribs and drabs recently, I thought it'd be a good idea just to wait a little while until I've got a few things to show you. Anyway, I'm in that position now, so here we are. Just before I start, I also want to apologise as well, because um, even though I've been trying to um, watch um, as many people's videos as possible and keep in touch with them, um, I've not always been able to comment um, because... I'm subscribing to so many people now and they're putting out such great numbers of videos and great quality videos that it's just a job just to keep up with watching um, the things as opposed to commenting. But I am going to try and make um, more effort to try and do more comments in the future um, because I like to show my appreciation uh, for people taking the time and trouble to put these things up. So anyway, that's it. Apologies for that, but I will try and do more comments. Okay, without any further ado, uh, I'm going to start off with a mini-series that I picked up a couple of weeks ago. Um, this is not something that i would seen before, so I didn't know anything about it. But the thing that attracted me to it was um, the creative team and two of the people involved, which was Sean Phillips and Bill Sinkovich. And it is a six issue series called Black Widow, The Things They Say About Her. Now I've not read this yet, um, but I'm hoping to do that pretty soon. But um, these are the issues that I picked up. Issue one. Issue two. Issue three. Issue 4, number 5, and the final issue, number 6. I'm kind of into all things Black Widow at the moment. I'm really enjoying the current series that is going to finish with issue number 20 uh, with the creative team that's on that at the moment. I think it's been really, really good. Um, so I'm kind of, whenever I see anything Black Widow related, um, I'm usually picking it up. So, like I said, I've not read this. If you've read it um, and you want to leave any comments about it, please feel free to do so. Right, a couple of um, regular covers from this week that I wanted to show you because I just think they're uh, um, really good covers. Um, and the first of these is from Xenoscope. And this is a series that I hadn't planned to pick up. Um, I saw this issue number one and this particular uh, cover and it's a series called Coven and I believe it's a five issue mini series. And I saw this cover by Jimmy Tyndall. I'm a big fan of Jimmy Tyndall's so um, I decided to look into it a bit more and it looks as though uh, Jimmy Tyndall is going to do a cover uh, for every issue of this series. He's definitely doing issues 1, 2 and 3 so I've decided that I'm going to pick up um, the full 5 issue mini-series. Um, I just love his artwork, it's absolutely amazing. So there's that one from this week. And I also, um, I bought my first ever comic from Dark Horse and that is issue number 1 of Barbed Wire. Um, I'm of a certain vintage where I'm old enough to remember the movie of Barbed Wire with Pamela Anderson 
Uh, and even though it was a terrible movie, I've got happy memories of it because of the outfit that Pamela Anderson used to wear, kind of an old black leather outfit. Um, I'm also a massive fan of Adam Hughes, so when I found out that he was doing the covers for this, um, I had to pick this up. I've just realised as well, and it's the first time I've noticed that, that apart from the title of the comic, this has got no trade dress on it whatsoever, which is really awesome. And quite unusually, um, as well as doing the regular cover, Adam Hughes also did the variant, so I had to pick that up as well. So again, looking forward to reading that. Right, on to some um, variant covers that I've picked up over the past few weeks. And one of them that I was really, really happy to get, and for a good price as well, it was certainly a price that I was happy to pay. But I've been looking for this variant, um, or trying to get it ever since it first came out. And it's um, an issue, uh, I don't know, it's not got the issue number on it. I don't know if it's issue number five of um, Robin Hood from Xenoscope. And I believe this is, yeah, this is a cover by Giuseppe Cafaro, who is another good artist. Um, I don't specifically hunt out, hunt out covers by him, but this one, I loved it when I first saw it. Uh, this is a couple of years old now, but as I say, I've been trying to get hold of this for a long time. Finally got it, so I'm really pleased about that. A variant that I picked up a couple of weeks ago, um, and this was a devil of a job to get. Um, and it's Death Sentence number one. And this is the one in ten cover by Monty Nero, who's um, actually part of the creative team. Um, and I had a devil of a job to get this. And I think I really lucked out because a copy came on eBay, and I think I must have just been searching just as. It actually was on sale and I managed to get it for cover price so I was really happy to get that. Then from uh, DC Comics the um, variant to Starfire number one. This is by Emanuela Lopacino who I was uh, lucky enough to meet at London Super Comic Con earlier this year. A uh, really nice cover. I've also recently picked up a couple of variants from another of my favourites, who's Addy Granoff. Um, I picked up issue number two of Black Widow Deadly Origin. This is the white outfit variant. I've already got a copy of this that I've had signed by Addy. Uh, I think it was when he was at London Film and Comic Con when Stan Lee was there. But this I saw on eBay and it was only about £1.50. So I thought I'm always happy to get another copy of this in my collection. So pick that up. A more recent um, Granoff variant that I managed to get hold of was the this variant for Secret Wars number one, and it's the Travelling Man variant, uh, which is a chain of comic stores in the UK, and I think they're mainly based in the north of England, if not exclusively. So another nice cover. But the one that I was most happy to get of the Graf variants was this variant to um, Inferno number no. 1, which is of course a Secret Wars tie-in. Really, really beautiful cover there of magic. A um, couple more Secret Wars variants that I've picked up. Um, this is another um, Addy Granoff variant. And this is... Amazing Spider-Man, Renew Your Vows, number one. Really, really nice cover. I think this is the limited edition comics variant. As much as I like that one, I do feel, in my opinion, that it was trumped, however, by uh, this cover of Renew Your Vows, number one. This is the cover that J. Scott Campbell um, did, and... He does a lot of kind of exclusive variants, but this is the first one that he's ever produced himself. And it was only for sale um, through one comic store in America, uh, Rupp's Comics. When I first looked into this, I didn't think I was going to be able to get one because um, it was just so expensive. 
the cost of the comic was uh, equaled by the cost of the postage from the States. Um, so what I decided to do was see if I could get a couple of people interested in also getting comics at the same time, uh, getting copies of this comic at the same time, um, so that we could share the postage costs. And um, a couple of my friends, Adrian and um, Matt, uh, they were kind enough to say they wanted copies and they were happy for me to organise it. So we all managed to get a copy at a reasonable price that we were happy to pay. So there it is, very, very nice copy. Um, these are in immaculate condition, so I'm planning to get this graded at some point in the not too distant future. And my third copy of Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows is the Mark Brooks cover, um, which I only paid, I think I paid 5 99 for this. It had come down in price by the time I actually was looking to buy a copy, so I was really happy to get that. So guys, that's it for this edition of Bag and Board. Hope you enjoyed it. I am planning to do one hopefully um, in the not too distant future. And this one is going to be a couple of Kickstarter rewards that I've received. I would have been able to do it sooner, but um, some of the, with the second Kickstarter reward that I received, some of the um, pledge rewards and the stretch goal target rewards I didn't actually receive. So I had to contact the, um, the guy who did the Kickstarter. Anyways, pop those in the post to me, but they're on the way to me from America. So it's probably going to be the back end of next week before I receive them. So hopefully before much longer, um, there'll be another video. But in the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed watching this one. If you have, uh, please feel free to like or dislike as appropriate. Leave any comments. And if you're not already subscribed, uh, really happy if you subscribed. I'm still hovering just below 200 subscribers, so I'm hoping that I can kick on and just get above that 200 mark. So again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.